Okay, we've got our chat up and running. Everything's going? Yep. So. We're here? We're here. People have arrived. Welcome everyone to the Michaels Live class. I'm Jordan Shepard. I'm with Illumilite. We're gonna do three resin projects tonight. Uh, and we're gonna move pretty quickly. This is an hour class, intermediate level. And uh, I, hope, I hope you're ready to learn or do it live with me or take notes. I believe Michaels will actually post this as well. Uh, afterwards, we're gonna record this. So if you have questions or if you didn't catch something, don't panic, don't freak out. You can always watch this and go back on their YouTube channel. So should we get started? Should we get going? I feel like we're here, let's go for it. So I'm gonna start us off. Uh, we have Taylor with me here. Taylor's gonna be my partner tonight. Hello. She is in the chat. So if you have questions, type them up, send them her way. She will be responding. She'll also be helping me because we're doing three things at once and <laughs> I'm gonna need a little bit of help. So first things first, let's talk about PPE, personal protective equipment. Uh, the main things we're gonna be using are gloves. I like these nitrile gloves and right here, some safety glasses. You don't need to have as fancy safety glasses as I have. These are prescription because I like to see really clearly, a little bit dorky, um, but you definitely want some gloves. Uh, we get the question all the time about respirator. Should you, should you be wearing a respirator or not? Uh, it comes down to your space and your own allergies and your own propensity. So for us, it's about ventilation. You know, it, are we in a safe environment where there's, you know, plenty of room, plenty of airflow? And we are. We're in a very large so very. shop, very large shop. So we're not going to worry about that tonight. But if you're in a small closet, a small room and you're nervous about it, wear a respirator. Just off the bat default to that. So that's the explanation there. I'm going to go ahead and put my PPE on. And we're going to start with uh, if you well, we're going to start with the, the push pin, actually, uh, which is going to be a mold using amazing mold putty. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab that. Thank you, Taylor. You're welcome. So this is what we're making. We're gonna make a mold out of amazing mold putty, and then we're gonna use some of the amazing casting resin and a simple push pin, and we're gonna make, we're gonna drop, but then we're gonna make an actual push pin that you could put in a cork boards, could be decorative, could be shells, could be a million different things. We're gonna use shells tonight. We're gonna to say that we went on a beach vacation as a team and that's what we're doing. So if, only. if, yeah, right, if only right now. So, all right, so starting with mold putty, I'm gonna unbox this. Everything you're gonna to see tonight, except for maybe a couple pieces of equipment here or there, is from Michaels. You can get all of this at Michaels online, in store, you know where to go. So this is mold putty. It is a two part silicone putty that we are gonna mix equal parts of. You could do by volume, you could do by weight as well. You could put this on a scale. I'm gonna go uh, by volume, kind of by eye, and I'll start by rolling out one of side A and one of side B. So just a nice, simple ball. And then Taylor and I have already picked out a C shell, make sure I say that properly, a C shell that I am going to mold. I think it's behind the mold putty box, actually. There it is. Yeah. So this was from a, a small bag of decorative seashells that you can get at Michael's as well. And that's gonna be what we're making the push pin out of. And we'll make it a fun color too. So don't need a ton of mold putty to pull this off. I'm gonna use a good amount so that you can see it on camera very, very well here. And you can see I've rolled out one side very easily. And I've rolled out the other side. I gotta be honest, I'm a little proud of myself right now. That is... That is the right amount. Yeah, that is the right amount. So if you, let's say you didn't have the right amount, I'll, I'll ruin my perfect piece there. No big deal. Just get into the actual jar again, add a little bit more, roll it into a nice ball and get the right size. So we're looking for two equal sizes of this. You can close these up, put them back in the box or on your workbench, wherever you are. And now's the fun part. <sighs> We're gonna squish these together to actually make our mold. So the open time for this, not very long. We have a couple minutes, you know, 120 seconds, 60 seconds. So we're gonna move pretty quickly here, but I'm gonna talk you through what I'm going to do before I do it, because we're gonna move fast. I'm gonna push these two together. I'm gonna to mold them together in my hand until they're a consistent yellow color. Then I'm gonna take this seashell. I'm actually gonna roll it into one big ball and then press it gently over the top. And then we're gonna wait 20 minutes for that to cure. We're not gonna sit here in silence for 20 minutes. We're gonna move on to another project. But 
until then, let's get going. So I'm just gonna fold these together in my hand. And you can see it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's, it's not combining, right? Well, you gotta work it. So this 60 seconds that we have of open time, you need to use all of it here, fold it over itself. We're looking for that consistent yellow color here. What's the, is it ASMR? Is that the audio? Yes. The audio yes. satisfy? I'm getting that right now. <laughs> Are you getting a lot of that? I can go closer to my microphone for everybody. It's probably either really bad or really good, depending on who you are. Well, we're getting closer now. Here we go. We are almost there. That's pretty much consistent all the way through. I'm going to roll my sleeves up. So now that we're pretty consistent in yellow, it has not been very long at all. It's not hard to mix. I'm going to roll it into a big ball, getting rid of all of the air that's in there. We don't want any air bubbles or any weird fold overs that aren't going to give us the final result we want. So there it is. That's the mold putty. That's the thing we're going to make a mold of. So quick here's what, question. oh yes, quick question. Yeah. Can you use mold putty without gloves? Can you use mold putty without gloves? Yeah, you can. This one is actually okay. I figured I'd just put the gloves on early and then never think about it again for the rest of the night to make it easy on myself. So you do not have to use gloves for this. This works without. All right, so I've got my seashell here. I've got my mold putty. All we're going to do is start at the very top and then very gently, very, very gently. I'm using my fingertips so that I have a little bit more control. We're just going to press down over top of that mold. I'm kind of moving my fingers around back and forth just to make sure it's kind of going around that to the sides of the shell itself as well. Okay. Like I said, I used a little bit more than you probably need for a shell this size. You can dial that in, but I wanna make sure there's a nice visual for everybody here. And I'm working on one of these self-healing X-Acto mats. I like these a lot if I'm doing small crafting-based projects here, uh, not a large river table or a large woodworking project uh, because they're great and not a lot of stuff sticks to them. I've had dried resin on here and I can scrape it off pretty easily. So. No big deal. All right, I feel comfortable with this. I feel confident. I've pushed it all over the sides. This is gonna to start to cure. It's gonna take 20 minutes, so we're jumping to something else, but it's gonna to start to cure. There's one thing we wanna do before we move on though. I'm gonna grab a, a stir stick, a paint stick, and I'm just gonna make a little flat indent on the top, just a little bit of a base here. That's because when we demold this, when we take that seashell out of the mold, we're gonna turn it upside down and then pour resin into it. And if we turn this upside down and we've made this round mound, that's it's gonna just kind of roll all over the place. That's no bueno, we can't do anything with that. So giving ourselves a flat surface, once this is cured up, we'll be able to turn it over and it'll be stable while we pour. That's so simple. I feel like- I've got a couple questions though. You got a couple questions it's though. simple, but people have questions, which is That's great. okay, let's do it. Where can you get a mat like that, first of all? Uh, pro most craft stores, I, you know, I would, uh, I would imagine, I can't say off the dome that Michael sells them. Um, I, I don't know. Somebody it's at Michael's might know. Mat. It's an exacto self-healing, uh, cutting mat. So they are, they're really popular. If you were an art student or if you know an art student, they probably have 10 of these and they're probably sliced up all over. So it's used for, for cutting things and, and getting things kind of Ugh, all squared away. It's, that's why it has this fun geometry pattern. So I'm going to take this away. We've got 20 minutes. Timer starts now. And we're going to move on to the other, one of our other projects we that we have, which is a rose encapsulation. So there's a few things we got to set up real quick. As you look at my worktop here, you'll see there's some plastic down. I like putting plastic down resin can spill you're stirring things go places it's just don't ruin your kitchen table don't ruin your countertops grab the plastic and go from there so give you some supplies here i appreciate that <laughs> so for the rose encapsulation we're going to use a new product that illuminite has just launched that is in michael's stores and that's amazing deep pour excuse me uh, amazing deep pour is a little bit different than the maybe amazing clear cast that you're used to using if you've used resin before this is a deep pouring epoxy which means you can pour up to two inches in some castings at a time. If you tried that with a regular epoxy, 
you're not going to get the results that you want. Uh, this is actually specially formulated to give you a better clarity, to give you uh, a faster kind of working time, right? Uh, when I say working time, I mean a faster time to get your projects done if it's a very, very big project. In this case, we're making this rose encapsulation. It's kind of a small cube. So this project, I'm going to have to kind of kitchen show you a little bit and pull out a finished one. This is going to take a few days to fully cure, but trust me when I say the results are absolutely worth it. So there's your amazing deep pour. It is a two parts to one part epoxy that we're gonna mix up and get going. So we didn't need our safety glasses for the amazing mold putty. We do need it for this though. So safety glasses on and we'll go from there. Okay, can I get the molds? Well, she was already ahead of me, of course. What was I thinking? All right, so these are some very simple silicone molds that you can grab at Michael's. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this top. Everybody to watch me as I <laughs> cut the top very slowly here. That you know what, that's on me. Didn't realize how this is open. Wow, there we go. Genuine struggle. I'm gonna ask for the assist here. You got it. My that's gloves cannot know. grip that piece of paper. Right? Am I, am I crazy? Easy. That's there all right. There you go. It goes that way. Got it though. So I'm going to use this cube mold from this set. If I can get it out. This might not be the first time we struggled tonight. So bear with me. Here we go. Bada bing. The cube mold. So to do this, we're gonna mix up this amazing deep pour, but we also need some dried flowers. When I say dried flowers, I mean dried flowers. You don't wanna use fresh flowers for this. They, uh, they have so much moisture in them that they'll end up releasing a bunch of air and your finished product won't turn out the way you want it to. So if you're looking for uh, dried flowers or wanna know how to do that, uh, silica gel, those little packets that you often get in uh, different shipments that keep things dry, you can actually use silica gel to dry out flowers and dry out other things. So that's how, well, these were actually air dried, but- I thought we had some right here. But we had some good. over there. Will you hand me my, uh, my positioners? Yes. This right here. Let me give y'all an unlock. If you haven't heard of these before, these are actually soldering uh, holders for electrical work. They go where you want them to go and they stay where you put them. It's amazing. We're gonna use one of these arms actually to hold our rows in place. So that will keep it suspended in our mold, let it cure exactly in the position we want. Okay. May I have a mixing stick, a large mixing stick? Oh. <laughs> Lesson learned again. There we go. So I'm gonna mix up only, I mean, honestly, you can see the size of the mold and you can see the size of the cup here. I'm not gonna mix up too much. I do need a two to one mix ratio, right? So I'm gonna do two parts. I'll mix up six, uh, six ounces total, but I'm gonna mix up two parts of the B side here, and then four parts taking me up to six ounces of the A side. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll unscrew the top here. We've got our B side, and we'll go up to two ounces. As I measure this. Please. When would you choose deep pour over Amazing Casting Resin? Oh, great question. Clear cast or ACC Plus? Great question. So Amazing Deep Pour is a very specific product. Uh, the clarity is insane, but the open time is long. And when I mean long, I mean, I can mix this up and we can, this team can go have dinner together, come back and then pour our project. It's a 90 minute open time. So we have plenty of work time here. The actual gel time on this isn't until eight hours after that. So again, long time, the tack free time where you touch it, you probably shouldn't touch it, but where you can touch it and it's not gonna be really sticky and gummy, 24 to 72 hours, depending on your environment. And the full cure is seven to five days. So, you know, oftentimes we have customers that do tumblers, let's say. This is not a product for a tumbler, right? That tumbler is gonna be turning forever and all this uh, epoxy is gonna go away. So we would use a deep pour product in a larger casting like this, where we can actually do it in one pour, no problem. Uh, whereas Amazing Clear Cast is perfect for thin coatings, much smaller castings where you're pouring maybe a quarter inch at a time. 
uh, Amazing ClearCast Plus, which is another newer product, has added UV protection. So if you're making a project that's going to be outside or it's going to be maybe in and out of doors more often, that's a great option there. The, uh, the tack-free time on Amazing ClearCast Plus is a little bit longer than the Amazing ClearCast. So you got to wait, wait a little bit longer. Keep that in mind. But the added UV protection is, is phenomenal. We love that. So I'm just mixing up this deep pour here. It's very thin, probably very, very thin compared to all the other epoxies that you've used if you've never used a deep pour epoxy. So don't freak out. It's all good. It will combine together. Now, is this one that you would put in a vacuum chamber or pressure pot? Ooh, great question. So it depends. It's kind of up to you. Here's, well, I'll tell you right now what we're going to do tonight is we're not going to use a vacuum or pressure pot because Amazing Deep Pour is such uh, a thin viscosity, right? It's very runny, more like water than it is like gel, I guess you could say. Uh, the air will naturally release. When you have that thin of viscosity and a very long open time, 90 minutes and a gel time of eight hours, there's so much time for the air to slowly make its way to the surface. So the benefit of this is really crystal clear uh, castings with no vacuum, no pressure pot, none of the scary tools that you might not be ready to upgrade to or might not be ready to get started with. So this is a, a great starter if you're looking to maybe do something a little bit different than a coaster or a tray or something like that. You want to get into something pretty cool, something a little different, and this is it. So as I mix, I'm going to talk a little bit about mixing here, and then I'll probably keep the same principles in mind as you're mixing the other projects up, but I'll just talk about it this one time. So when we mix our resin, we want to be scraping the sides and scraping the bottom. And I've actually trimmed off the bottom of these uh, popsicle sticks and made them flat. That lets me really get to the bottom of the cup and get all that resin combined. So that's a key thing there. I'm also, I'm adding a little bit of air as I'm mixing by hand. I'm not worried about it. But if you're looking to minimize that, you can really go slow and fold things over with your resin. Uh, that's another trick that we tell people to do. So just rotating, rotating. Move it away. Good. Fair enough. All right. So I've mixed up. I don't see any swirls. Swirls is what uh, uncombined resin looks like within your mixing cup. So if you're looking in that cup and you see some swirls, you have more mixing to do. We recommend four to six minutes of mixing. Uh, it seems like a long time, fam. I get that. It's okay. <laughs> it's worth it. What you don't want is all this hard work and then an uncured project or some weird trouble spot. So take your time. Mix thoroughly. It's worth it. Last mixing tip before we keep, uh, keep going here is the stick itself. There's a bunch of uncombined epoxy on this stick. So what we're going to do is make sure we scrape off this stick. Now I'm starting at an angle to get all, all the bulk off really. And then I'm going completely perpendicular to the actual edge of the cup and getting a completely clear stick. So all that that was no longer combined, I can now scrape in and combine. And yeah, I had a couple swirls that were on that stick. So I'm glad I did that. Some uh, mixing patterns, you know, a lot of people just go concentric circles. That's fine. I like a figure eight in a thinner epoxy like this. Actually, it feels like it's mixing a little bit better. That's my experience. But, you know, if you like concentric circles, do concentric circles. It's up to you. This is your project. Because of this long open time, mm -hmm. a couple questions. couple questions. Let's do it. First of all, is that just a plastic cup that you're making? The people want to know. The people want to know the if people it's... people want to know about the cup. People want to know about this cup. Yeah, let's show off the cup. All right, cup it is. Uh, this is a graduated plastic uh, cup. I find these perfect for very small projects where I still need accuracy. When you're mixing up epoxy in other resins and you're doing smaller amounts, if you have these big mixing cups that are graduated, it goes from four ounces to eight to 24, and suddenly you don't need that much, right? So you need a smaller amount. You need smaller increments, like one, two, three, four, five, six, straight up to eight. So I'm using this straight plastic cup. I'm mixing thoroughly and I've, I've just purchased these locally here. So it's a personal preference. You can use whatever though. The most important thing is making sure you have your mixing volumes correct. So there we go. Couple more. Couple more. Could you use regular clear cast for this project? You could use regular clear cast for this project. Uh, the difference is if you pour this whole queue full of amazing clear cast, you're probably gonna have a higher exotherm than you actually want. Exotherm is, is how all these resins cure. They cure by heat. It's a chemical reaction that causes heat to occur and that causes actual molecular structures to uh, form. So if you're using Amazing ClearCast, 
everything's going to heat up really, really quickly and you're going to have shrinkage on the sides and you're going to maybe have yellowing if you do an even bigger casting. So you can, you just have to do it in layers. So it's a little bit longer. Then you're going to have to actually think about seam lines and your open times and when you're pouring. It's possible. It's doable. You can get great results. It's just more complicated. I prefer the express route, which is amazing deep pour. All right. Cool. So I've got this here. What I'm going to actually do is I'm going to trim this off after my project is done. And you know what? Yeah, I'm going to put this little cube right in the middle and make it easier on Taylor and myself. I'm going to go ahead and position my arm where I think it's going to be approximately here. These are great. No joke, everyone, if you're paying attention and you're putting together a shopping list for afterwards, put this on that list. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of get my rose in here and it looks like it's a little too big. So I'm gonna lose some petals, very sad, but now it's just set decoration. So there we go, that fits perfectly. I like that. I could push this down a little bit, make sure it's where I want and it's not gonna go anywhere. That's great. Now I could just pour this epoxy on top. That would be one way to do it. It's very fragile rose. Instead, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of pre-work here and actually dip this rose into that epoxy and get a good amount within those petals. I find this works uh, to get a little bit less of a air bubble situation happening if you're not careful. So I've got that nice and mixed in. I'm gonna real quick move it into my mold. It can sit in there, no problem. Put it in the grips, get it repositioned piece de resistance. All I'm going to do is pour in my thoroughly mixed, amazing deep pour. I'm just going to pick a corner and I'm just going to pour nice and slow and consistently. If you just dump this in, you could splash it out. You could add more air, all things that you do not want when you're using this stuff. So it's a great question. Uh, I, here's what I don't want a torch. Here's why I don't want a torch, I should say. So I've got this pretty much filled up. I'm going to leave it right there. I don't want that whole rose in there. I want the rose to kind of be coming out of a table if this was sitting on a table. Uh, why I don't want to torch this is because this is a dry rose. This is uh, kindling, basically. <laughs> so you don't need to torch the top of this, right? Uh, you were using amazing deep pour. So all these little micro bubbles that you see there right now are going to release over the next, you know, few hours that we have here to work with. So this project, believe it or not, is done. It's been a few minutes and we've already have a project that we can sit and wait. So when I say sit and wait, how long are we sitting and waiting? We're sitting and waiting for a few days here. This amount of amazing deep pour is going to take uh, probably most of that 24 to 72 hours in order to be tank free. So you want to put this in a place where it's not going to get bumped over or knocked around or there's not going to be a lot of dust on it. You can cover it with some plastic. Just put it somewhere where it's not going to be messed with. It's maybe a little bit annoying to wait that long, but I'm going to show you a fresh one demolded that I just did. It's going to be worth it, I promise. Okay, that is the Rose Project. Easy peasy, right? I'm going to slowly move this. I got it. Oh, Mike Foppel is on. Aw. Mike Foppel, our fearless leader. Awesome. Okay, we've done our amazing deep pour rose encapsulation. We're feeling really good about that. We've got our amazing mold putty. That's curing over there. We got some more, uh, a good amount of time still to wait on that before we can demold that seashell that we're working with. So we're going to move on to a photo tray, which is... A great project. Honestly, this is a great beginner project or an intermediate project if you want to take it up a notch. Um, yeah, there you go. This is what we're headed for. This is probably what you saw in the promotional photo. Uh, we're going to encapsulate some Polaroids that we've freshly taken. Um, this was from a, a, a get together that we had, but we didn't have any more Polaroids. So I decided I'd take some beautiful photos with some of my favorite tools around the shop. Um, you know, things like, uh, let's see here. If I can pick these up. We've got some team photos. You know, I love tuck tape more than anything, so I figured I'd want to highlight uh, tuck tape. The torches, uh, very hot. I love my chop saw. It's one of my favorite tools in the shop. Clamps, if you're not careful, they hurt. So I figured I'd, I really want to romanticize 
And uh, I'll, I'll, I want to have these memories forever, really, is what I'm Absolutely. talking about here. So they're worth it. They're worth it. So we're going to start off with a tray like this. This is a simple tray that you can get. It's often found in kind of that, that wood hobby section of, of a Michaels. Uh, and we're going to use this. This is perfect. There's a little bit of a lip here between the handles, so our resin's going to sit perfectly. And we're going to go ahead and get these photos all set up. So to get these photos on this tray, glued down, ready, set to go, we're going to use Mod Podge and a foam brush. Okay, got two. she's got two. So I'm going to use both of these. I'm going to use one of them right now. I'm going to open up this Mod Podge. Take my time here. There we go. Perfect. And I'm just going to dip my foam brush in here and put just a very, very thin layer down on this tray. Should I have grabbed a bigger brush? Yes, I should have grabbed a bigger brush, but that is okay. Learn from my mistake. So why I'm putting this thin layer down, I really... I want these photos to stick. I want them to have a particular position and I don't want them to slide around when I'm mod podging them for the second time on top to seal them up. So this just gives me a nice, nice baseline here. We don't need to overdo this one. And I'm using, I'm using the clear, right? Yep. I'm using the clear Mod Podge. I don't want a matte finish or anything like that. We'll just make sure it's kind of invisible. Here we go. All right, our photo tray is ready to go. I've got all these photos of our team members and my tools here. So I'm gonna place these. You can do whatever you want here. You could rotate these around, put them in unique spots. I think I'm just gonna go straight into the corners. And fill this whole thing up. And that Mod Podge is nice and sticky. Let's me lock them in a little bit easier. There's a photo of Jazz, our videographer. <laughs> There's my Makita saw. So many fun memories, <laughs> me and my Makita saw. We've been through a lot together, trials and tribulations. I don't think the air hose is going to fit everybody. So I'm gonna next, say, time. next time, next project. All right, I've got my photos here. I've got the Mod Podge below them, so they're not going to slide around while I'm doing this. And then I'm going to go ahead, get a nice good amount of Mod Podge, and I'm just going to go right over the top of these. I said this a little bit earlier. I'm going to repeat myself, though. I'm sealing these up. I'm sealing them up so that hopefully not a lot of epoxy gets underneath this. They're nice and set and stable. They're not going anywhere. Kind of protects them just a little bit more. So don't be shy. Get a good amount on your foam brush. Don't panic that it suddenly looks opaque and a little bit hazy. This is clear Mod Podge, so that will go away. I also like to hit the sides of the tray as well, just the kind of at an angle here. Just make sure that if there is any cracks in the wood, gives it an opportunity to seal that up as well. So here we go. I'm also not putting a ton of pressure down. I'm just kind of grazing over these photos. Nice and even like this. Here's a question you may or may not have an answer to. Okay, those are always my favorite. Are foam brushes reusable? Are foam brushes reusable? It depends on what you use them with. For a Mod Podge like this, that Mod Podge is gonna harden up. Uh, so in this case, I wouldn't recommend reusing this foam brush. Uh, if somebody out there who's watching this has, has a solution, mineral spirits or, or, or something I don't know, please let Taylor know in the chat and we will make sure that everybody else has that same knowledge that you have. All right. I've given this a really good coat. I'm feeling, I'm feeling confident. Good. I'm feeling great. I feel nostalgic already with these memories. <laughs> the sweet spot. Okay. Be done. 
Walk Barb away. Says warm soap and water. Warm Barb. Thank you, Barb. Thank you, Barb. Warm soap and water, everybody. Warm soap and water. You learn something every day. That's why we have the chat. Oh. That's why we have the chat. If you're nervous to join in on the chat, don't be. It's just Taylor and I. We're just hanging out. Please let us know what questions you have. This needs to dry, so we're going to set this aside. And we're going back to mold putty, folks. Thank you, Taylor. Are we all done? How long has it been? Do we know? At least 20 minutes. At least 20 minutes? 8.30 It is 8.30. All right. Late night. Late night. Yeah, thank you for spending your evening with us. Or, or the day, if you're watching this afterwards, the day with us as well. So this, the exacto mat is back in. And this mold putty, I mean, it's not putty anymore. This product actually turns into silicone. Silicone, like you think of, you know, that rubbery kind of stiff and strong. That's what this is. I mean, I'm pushing, nothing's going on. So let's go ahead and demold this. We're just gonna kind of rock it around a little bit, kind of get it loose from the exacto mat, comes right up. And you can see right in there is our beautiful shell. Doesn't look like I have a lot of gaps around here. That's good, that's what we want. Uh, if you just kind of push this over real quick and didn't think about it, you'd end up with big open gaps here. And big open gaps mean more places for resin to go. It means your casting's not gonna be the way you want it. So to get this out, we've got that flat bottom. All I'm gonna do is just give a little bit of pressure on the underside of this. And that shell comes right out. Perfect, you can use it. I don't know, in a jar or for some other decoration or make another mold of it later on. Some thumbtacks went everywhere. We're not going to talk about it. Uh, I do want to talk about silicone for a second. Silicone picks up an extreme amount of detail, which is one of my favorite things about it. So all the little nuances, including this, uh, this little curly cue down here and some of the texture of the shell, that's actually going to be within our casting. So using an amazing mold putty like this is phenomenal if you're looking to replicate things with a lot of fidelity. So we've got our mold here. This is ready to go. We've used deep pour. We're going to use amazing clear cast later. Right now, we're going to use amazing casting resin. Amazing casting resin is completely different than everything we've done before. This is a two part resin measured one to one by volume. We're talking, when I say different, I mean very different. It's not clear, it's actually opaque. It actually turns white. The open time for this, two minutes. We're going to, I mean, we're cooking, fam. We're going to go really, really quickly with this. And when it cures, it cures very, very fast. We're talking a demold time of, what do we say, 15 minutes? I believe it's 15 minute demold time. 10 to 15 minutes, kind of depends on your environment. So this is a great product if you're looking to churn stuff out. Is it good for coatings and castings and things like that? No, this isn't a coating or, or not, sorry. Yes, it is good for castings. No, this is not good for coatings. So here we go. Ms. Taylor, may I have a mixing cup? You may. I have a boot full of tacks. You have a boot full of tacks? Yes. Wow, that is a nightmare right there. <laughs> Here are some sticks. Hey, thank you so much. So our tack, or our, excuse me, our shell is not that big. We don't need a lot of resin for this. So I'm gonna mix up two ounces of resin. When you're mixing up that small of an amount of resin, you gotta be really accurate, right? There's, if you're off by 5%, let's say, in one ounce, well, that's a lot, right? That's a, a huge portion of things. If we're mixing it up a lot, you have a little bit more tolerance here. So we're going to be very, very accurate in our measuring. But before we start pouring, I feel I'm going to pick out a color. Yeah, we didn't think about We didn't that. think about a color. Let's get it in the chat. Let's do what it. Color what color? Shine. I'm going to get the, uh, I'm going to get be the, <laughs> I will be careful with the text on the floor. I'm going to go get the grippers. We're actually going to use those again while you all decide what color we make this shell. Got one vote blue. One vote blue. Okay. And we're waiting. Purple. Purple. Blue again. Okay, blue. Blue's popular. Blue. Blue. Aqua. <laughs> aqua. Okay, that's very specific. <laughs> I feel like you have something in mind when you're saying aqua. I'm gonna have to mind meld with you there. Blue. Light blue. You got a blue and white. I'm hearing blue. Purple. I'm hearing blue. Purple's coming back. Purple's coming blue black. Has one by far. Okay. Blue one. We're going with blue. All right, we're gonna do blue here. So again, I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing the song of of this right here. This this gripper. I'm just gonna call it the gripper tonight. We're actually gonna use this to hold one of these very small tacks. Do we have the tacks? Did I did I put them somewhere? Here they are. There they are. I'm actually gonna use this gripper to hold one of these tacks exactly in place. So we're gonna actually embed 
I'm not going to mess up my rows over there. That would be tragic. So I'll actually go ahead and put this very gently if it'll hold it. There we go. In the position that I want it. So that this tack, the actual head of it, is going to be submerged underneath the resin. That's going to actually lock it in once this resin fires off. And you're going to have a thumbtack forever. You can't get it out. It's perfect. All right, so I've got the tack pretty much where I want it. Yeah, please. Nice and thank you very much. All right, that'll work. All right, let's get mixing our resin. I'm going to use uh, the A side first. It's clear. I like to use the A side to add my color, then add the B side to it. So again, let's be very mindful of our measuring here. I'm going to go just up to the one ounce line. My mat has a little bit of a, a bump in it here. So I'll accommodate for that. There we go. And then we're going to add some color. So this is these are our Illumilite dyes. You can use a lot of different things. There's a lot of different options out there. Let's just say I'm a little partial to our dyes. So a lot goes a long way. In this, I'm going to use just a drop, and that's going to be extremely saturated blue. You could actually, if you wanted a much lighter blue, uh, use a mixing stick like this and actually scrape some color off of the bottle itself. That's a great way to do that. Uh, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with saturated blue. This casting resin does cure white, like I said. So when you're thinking, if you've dialed in the exact color you want in the cup, just be cognizant of that. It's gonna turn white, so you're gonna have white and whatever blue you've added, so it's gonna be a little bit lighter. All right, got our A side in there, we've got our color in there. I'll mix that up so you can see how strong and dark we're going here. That's a deep, that's, a C, that's C blue right there. Is it Mariana's Trench? Isn't that what it is? The darkest part of the, the deepest part of the ocean, right? It's pretty deep, but that's okay. That's what we want, because this is gonna turn white. So now I'll take this up to the two ounce mark. Nice and slow, nice and slow, stopping right when I'm there. And we're cooking. All right, like I said, open time on this one, very short. We have two minutes. And it's a very thin viscosity resin as well. So it mixes up very easily. There's no need to panic and suddenly start whipping as hard as you can. Take your time, be smart, scrape the sides, make sure everything is nice and combined. Scrape the bottom. Simple mixture. Should I have repositioned my tack before I started mixing this? Yes. Are we going to do it on the fly? Yes. Is it going to work out? I hope so. I know this works. I did it before. It's just a matter of getting the positioning right. All right. I've mixed this up. You don't have to mix it for five or six minutes because we don't have five or six minutes. So I'm going to go ahead, get my mold exactly where I want it. Get my tack exactly where I want it. Under the surface, but I do not want to. I don't want to cast my uh, gripper here. So I think that's about right. If it's a little bit high, I can push it into the resin afterwards. So, all right, very delicate, very detailed pour here. I'm going to go right up to the edge. I'm just going to let it fill itself in. There's not a lot. Just got to take your time. A little bit more, a little bit more. All right, I'm good with that right there. And look at that, the tack it just washed right over. So our tack's in a good spot. That's gonna lock in there. And this is gonna cure, like I said, very, very quickly. We're talking 10 minutes. So I will actually demold this one live for you so you can actually see it. This one, we got days to wait, so I've got one ready for you. But we still have a trade to do. I said three projects, we're going for three projects, folks. This is one, this is two, let's go back to three. Are. Now our tray, I don't want to move this, so we're going to work right here. Our tray is not as dry as I would like it to be. I still, want to, I still want to show you how to do this. We're still going to move forward with the process, but make sure that this is completely, completely dry before you pour your epoxy. This is still going to work. I still feel confident in it. 
but just be cognizant of that. So for this one, we're gonna use Amazing Clearcast. I'm uh, assuming that you probably have used this before, or if you have it, this right here has been a fan favorite for a long time. It is also a two-part epoxy mix, one-to-one -one by volume, an A side and a B side. It's already clear. Real quick, you can see our amazing casting resin it has actually fired off. It changes color. You can see the cool blue that we got there. It's clean. Yeah, it is. Awesome. All right, so how much epoxy do you need for a tray this size? You can calculate that with a surface calculator. We have one of those on our Lumalite website. So before you get in the car and run to Michael's, you can actually calculate your dimensions, figure out how much resin you actually need, and make sure you buy the right amount. Do you need four 32-ounce kits? Do you need just a 16-ounce? Whatever it is, you can use a surface calculator before you head to the store. So... Amazing casting resin. I'm still wearing my PPE. I've got my glasses and gloves on the whole time. I'm just going to go ahead and open up these lids here. Get everything set. For this project in particular, like I mentioned before, how much do we mix? I'm going to do this whole cup. I'm going to do eight ounces worth. So that means I need four ounces of the A side and four ounces of the B side. You can see the A side is a little bit thicker. Do not worry when we combine it with the B side, this thins out, becomes nice and pourable. Just gonna make sure I get up to four ounces. There we go. Perfect. A little spin of the bottle actually helps you not spill on the sides and make a big mess. Here's a little, little tip for you. I'm a, should I? Should we put some glitter in this? Should we? I think we should. Should we? Always. We're gonna put some yes glitter, glitter in this. I, yes to glitter every time. I'm with you in that. There is some glitter. Yes. In that green milk crate you over there, it. or there should be. If there's not, I'll take the blame for that. So I'm mixing up the B side now. It's much thinner, much clearer, a little bit easier to pour. If you wanted to use Amazing Clearcast Plus, that's also at Michael's. That's a great one for this project as well. Both are great options. You know, are you planning on, on uh, making mojitos and taking this tray outside? If so, Amazing Clearcast Plus might be the way to go there. So, I found some gold glitter. Gold glitter? I'm just going to make sure it's open. And it is. All right. Let's use some gold glitter. With caution. With caution. <laughs> yes, glitter. Glitter and I have a, you know, very interesting relationship. I want to make sure it goes everywhere. It gets really frustrating. So I'm not adding my glitter yet. I'm going to mix this epoxy thoroughly first. I'll give it those, uh, that full five or six minutes here and make sure that these two are nice and combined. And then it's not cloudy. It's not hazy. There's no swirls. You get the deal. We talked about this on the amazing deep pour. All right. Scraping the sides, thoroughly combining folding over as well. I will scrape the stick off here in a little bit once I get this combined a little bit more. I don't want to do it now and then put it right back into uncombined resin. I'd have more uncombined resin on the stick then. So it makes sense to get everything combined in the cup if you can before you do that. So mix, mix, mix. Any questions? So far, Taylor, anything we need to no, chat through? No, no, people are okay. Here. We've got Don, we've got Mike, we've got Sydney answering <sighs> questions. I saw Kayton in there. More of the Illuminate family has joined the us. The Illuminate team has taken over the chat in the best oh, possible way. We are a big happy family here. We really, really are. We sure are. Let me make sure we're caught up on everything. But yeah, we just named about eight people on the Illuminate team that are sitting here supporting you, supporting Michaels. So. If you're doing projects and you're at Michael's and you're trying to figure out what to do and you're talking to somebody there, they can help you out. If you need help though, and you're at home and you don't know who to call, you can call us. We wanna make sure that you're successful, right? We wanna make sure your project goes perfectly, that everything goes smoothly and that you wanna get back in there, go to Michael's, get some more uh, epoxy and make more cool stuff because making stuff is really fun. Making stuff is fun. I've been doing it for years. Yeah doing it for years has never failed me once. I have failed it many times. I should clarify, I failed it a lot. That's how you learn. That is how you learn. Very, very true. While you're stirring, yes. what resins have you used so far and what resin are you using oh. right now? 
this pinch is is just everything right now. Uh, what resins have I used so far? I have used Amazing Deep Pour. That's what we put this rose into. I have used Amazing Casting Resin. That's the seashell that I made a casting of. I also use Amazing Mold Putty. Uh, that is this really fun handmade silicone mold. If, you've, if you're scared of silicone, if you've never heard of silicone, you don't know what you're doing, ding, 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 right here, this is your starter. And what I'm using right now, I'm about to pour on this tray, is Amazing Clear Cast our classic epoxy, fan favorite, all time. Mixing with just two fingers, this is painful. This is a workout right here. I'm used to mixing very, very large amounts of epoxy and resin, so getting my workout in for the night. That's for sure. All right, we're scraping the sides. Is there a Make sure everything's combined. glitter suspended? Oh, good question. What would you recommend? What would I recommend? Well, in this particular case, uh, we're doing a very, very thin coating on this tray. So it's gonna even itself out pretty easily. Uh, it, some of it depends on the specific gravity, the viscosity of the resin that you're using. If you're using an amazing deep pour and you use some really, really heavy glitter, well, that open time's really long, which means there's plenty of time for that weight difference for things to fall. If you're using an amazing casting resin, let's say, well, it's opaque. You're probably not gonna see all the glitter you put in it. But if you're using amazing clear cast, that it's a little bit thicker. It's not as thin of viscosity. The open time's much shorter. So that glitter should stay suspended pretty well. All right, we are pretty much thoroughly mixed. My hand is on fire right now. I have a brave face on for all of you out there. Staying strong, here we go. I scrape my stick. One more combine and mix, and it's glitter time. All right. All right. Be cool. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to add a good amount because it's going to be very thin, right? It's going out. It's going to spread itself out throughout the tray. So I'm not going to be shy here. Let's start with that. There's no such thing as too much glitter. There's no such thing as too much glitter. You know what? Fair enough. I'm not here to bash glitter. Obviously, I'm using it. You know, we just, you know, have a complicated relationship. All right, look at that, a golden cup. And for those of you that were worried about suspension, you can see there's the glitter's not, it's not going anywhere. It's not moving at all. So that works really, really well. Mix it up, try to get it combined to the bottom. There we go. Wipe off the stick one more time. You've been so patient. So patient while I've mixed this up. Now we're just going right on the top. Three, two, one. You can pour consistently in one spot. Or you know, or you can, can spread it out. Epoxy self-leveling, right? So you want to make sure you're on a level surface and that you have uh, a nice even, a nice even coat. It's gonna find its way to all those nooks and crannies. So don't worry too much about spraying. I used I used a good amount of glitter. I used a good amount. It's gonna spread it's itself out. Glittery. It's very glittery, right? These are my special tools, man. I gotta celebrate them. <laughs> so if your epoxy is not spreading out as fast, that's okay. Just tilt your tray a little bit. You can actually kind of coax that epoxy into the nooks and crannies and corners. So you notice I'm tilting this tray and my photos aren't moving. That's why we modge podge, folks. That's the reason right there. We don't want slip and slide. Those are fun at barbecues in the summer not in epoxy projects. You talked up our team so much. People are now wondering if we're hiring. <laughs> oh, Incredible. well, we love our team. We do love our team. <laughs> yes, we're hiring. We'd love to have you on our team. We'll find a spot for anyone. Especially you, Deb. That was a great tip. <laughs> Kudos. <laughs> All right, so I've moved my epoxy. This will continue to self level. We're gonna let this dry overnight i don't want you to have to wait so we have that other one to show you as well but we've got something here that should be almost ready to demold so i'm going to put this to the side show you the end result that you will get if you do this epoxy project you're going to see all these photos are beautifully encapsulated and this right here is fda compliant the amazing ClearCast is an fda compliant epoxy once it's fully cured over those five to seven days so food on this is is okay it's it's okay for food contact right now we don't want to put this in the washing machine, right? This is wood, this isn't gonna go well, but it's okay. You can serve drinks on this confidently, chips, a Super Bowl party in February, if that's gonna be a thing this year, we'll find out, but 
great tray, great starter project if you've never used epoxy before. This rose, we should, let's, de let's demold the rose. Like I said, I was gonna kitchen show you a little bit. So I have gone ahead and prepped one for you. I'm using that same cube mold as before. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of pull the sides, push out that cube. I might get a little messy because I'm using these gloves here, but normally I take my gloves off for a demold. Take your time, be patient. I know you're excited to get it out of the mold, but it's this is a this is a labor of love here. A lot of love and promise. They uh, our customer service is amazing. I, I will brag on them. They are some amazing folks over there. All right, and there we go. So there it is, a beautiful rose encapsulation, crystal clear. And when I say I mean like I mean crystal clear i can see everything underneath of this there's no air there's no micro bubbles in there at all it's because of that long open time of amazing deep pour so for the right projects for small things like this that are thicker castings and paperweights and, and different objects it's beautiful an absolute perfect finish amazing deep pour i'm gonna brag gorgeous. on this Ooh, yeah. gorgeous Ooh. there you go this is so doable you watch me do this you can do this I just poured epoxy and had a dried rose. You can absolutely pull this off. I've got full faith in you. There's the rose, there's the tray. Folks, we got one more left. That's our push pen. Let's go ahead and release our clamp here. And put that to the side. Oh yeah, we're there. Same demolding process as before. Thank you, Taylor. Same demolding process as before. I didn't, uh, I didn't have this perfectly, perfectly straight. I could have taken my time and positioned this before, like you said, learn from my mistakes. And I'm just gonna push on the back of this here and that shell is gonna come right out. Look at that. There it is, a beautiful shell. Do we have the other one as well that we, that we did? First shell? Yep, there's the other shell. It's a much darker blue. Um, with the push pin thoroughly embedded in there as well. That's not going anywhere. That's, lo that's locked in where it is. So if you have a cork board or actually if you have a mold putty box, <laughs> we're here, right? You can stick it right to it. So maybe if I didn't encapsulate all those Polaroids, I could put them in against a cork wall and just go for it. You can do so much stuff with this. You could, we could, we could have gone wild. We could have encapsulated larger objects with mold putty. We could have done, you know, five thumbtacks in a row. We could have made, you know, four projects at once. There's a lot to do with this stuff. The possibilities, they truly are endless. And the truth is we got all this stuff from Michael's. All, everything you see here was one trip to Michael's one afternoon, myself and one of my team members. And we have three beautiful projects that we could do again and again and again. So, questions? We're and, so. I have one that we line up everything, the boxes of everything we use so people can take a picture. Oh, absolutely. So, we're going to do that for this front camera. You got camera. it. I'm oh. just going to make some space. I'm going to move my knife to the side. <laughs> now that everything is cured and all, all the stuff's dry, I'm going to take off my PPE. How are you looking? Good. Here's the. Uh, yeah. Show off the rug. I'll put it on the. I'll put it on the <laughs> correct. The correct one there, if I can. You have that other shell as well. You know what? I just realized where I put the other shell. Right on the edge of the box, <laughs> because it's not going anywhere, folks. Right there. There's amazing mold putty. There's the molds itself, and the tray. If I can hold it upright. These are friends, these aren't my tools, but you know, I still love them. So it counts, at least in this instance. So thank you all for joining us. I don't think no questions? Go enjoy your evening, go make something. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to Illumilite. We're here to help you in any way we can. And go to Michael's, go get some fun project stuff. And, uh, and, and get, we'll be back. And we we'll will be, be back. back. Oh, more. that's right. We'll be back for more. We're coming back. It's a little secret, we'll be back. Until next time, everybody. All right. Take care. Bye. We'll see you later.